try to understand it um, especially for a differential control volume and differential control surface so we already know that the the mass principle conservation of mass principles actually we know that the rate of change it will be same the input and the output it will be, it will be same so you look here um, in this case when you're talking about the mass principle we said the total mass entering into the control volume cv is the control volume during a time delta t and the mass it is leaving that means just going out that means the inflow and the outflow it will be the net change of the uh, mass in the control volume so that we already know from previous uh, theories previous discussions so now here is some sort of example okay so forget about it we'll try to understand for a differential control volume so let's say this dotted line okay so this right dotted line this is the control surface and this is the control volume this is the control volume we took a very small sections uh, differential section dv differential control volume dv and the mass is da and let's say this is the uh, control surface da so da dm dv it means the differential part okay right so what we said when dv is the differential control volume dm is the differential mass da is the differential control surface so the change of the mass we know m equal rho v so dm it will be rho dv right so this is the total mass within the you know this is the this is the differential mass within the control volume dm equal rho dv now if we actually want to get the total mass total mass within the volume then what we need we need to do the integrations so here we did the integrations when we did the integration here different differentiation integration will cancel out so it will be m cv it is telling for the control volume and this one it will be integration of rho dv now this is the total mass and if you want to calculate the rate of change what the meaning of this rate of change this is actually the differential term that means the ch d over dt this is actually the rate of change or you can say the differential formulation so if we differentiate it initially we integrate it now if we just multiply like d dt mcv or in equal d dt of this this is actually the rate of change of the mass within the control volume now important thing is this concept is quite um, complicated so this is the final term but there could be some special cases when no mass crossing the control volume so this is the total system when i'm talking about the special case where no mass crossing the control volume that means this is a closed system if it is a if it is the case then this term it will be zero okay no mass crossing the control volume in a closed system that means this term it will be zero and we can write it is this d dt m c v this is equal zero so this equation it is valid when you know the control volume is fixed moving or deforming so no mass is crossing the control volume so that's the case but there could be other cases where the mass flow is happening uh, the mass flow is coming in or going out in the control volume through this differential area da so let's say now we'll discuss this case so let's say this n this is actually the unit vector the outward unit vector which is normal to this da so if it is the da so it's like this so it makes let's say 90 degree angle and v this is the velocity component okay the flow velocity which is you know relative to this uh, coordinate system da so now it makes an angle theta the velocity velocity makes an angle theta with this normal you know of the normal da so the mass flow rate okay the mass flow rate it will be proportional it will be always proportional to the normal component normal velocity component 
what is the normal velocity component you know the trigonometric functions so i'm not going to discuss a lot today because you know how when it will be cos theta when it will be sin theta so i usually want to make the videos small so the normal velocity component vn it will be v cos theta v cos theta so that means this normal velocity component it depends on the angle theta and depending on the angle theta sometimes the flow will be inflow sometimes the flow will be outflow and it could be minimum or maximum if we actually want to understand this so when this theta okay the theta flow angle let's say in one case the theta it is equal zero if the theta it is zero then we can say this vn it is v cos zero and we know cos zero it is equal one so cos zero is equal one so we got vn this is equal v if it makes a zero degree angle okay when the theta is zero that means it is not it is actually normal to the da it so it is the da and zero degree theta is zero that means no angle this is n this it makes no angle so that means the velocity also acting this way that means it is actually 90 degree angle it is normal to da it may confuse some of you that if G, with theta is zero then why it is normal normal means 90 degree it is normal to da so when the vn and the v it will be equal so that means we will we'll get the maximum outflow the flow is going this way so we'll get the maximum outflow flow is going out so that's the maximum outflow okay now if the theta it is 90 degree so then it will be cos 90 and cos 90 it is equal you know cos 0 1 cos 90 it is equal 0 so that means the vn it will be 0 so it will be minimum to minimum of 0 and this is you know actually 90 means it it makes 90 means now it will be tangent to da it will be now tangent to da and it is actually the outflow as well so it is a minimum of zero velocity but if it becomes theta is 180 so if it is if it is actually 180 so cos 180 it's you know the negative one so v and it will be negative v so that means again the flow is normal to va but it will be just the opposite directions so that means now it is inflow it is a maximum inflow it is normal to da but it will be opposite to you know opposite directions opposite direction means it is now inflow so that's actually how the angle change uh, makes this problem different this the special cases so we can write it down um we can making this concept more easier we can use it as a dot product so we can say the velocity component is vn and the differential uh, mass flow rate will be this so we'll use this uh, formula when we'll solve some problems uh, depending depending on the problems we'll actually use this um, understandings so the net mass flow rate then we just need to consider the whole control system so this is you know we we already have, we know delta m equal this so this is for the differential section if you integrate for the net mass flow rate then just integrate it and it will be the final term so we'll solve some problem during the tutorials and then you will get much better understandings so that's all f for now and we'll discuss the in details during the lecture.